Welcome to Kansas Rain Apocalypse 2021. Ah! Can't even get close to the door. Close it, close it. Anyway, this storm's ridiculous. On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we are going to do the inspection on my Mercedes S430. But for a few seconds, we're gonna wrap up the Nissan Cube. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Argo and like I said, we're gonna jump right into the Mercedes S430. But first, I just wanted to assuage your fears on a few of the things on the cube. So uh, I just went through and I put all the Christmas trees back in the fender well liners. I put the uh, mud flaps on, the factory mud flaps. I had all of those for them. Uh, all the interior plastics, tossed those back in. Everybody was super worried about the ground on the defrost, like I would have forgotten it. Obviously I would never forget something like that. It's free mounted, it's under the plastic. Um, I just didn't feel like it was that important to show. All the carpets are back in the back, and we have here from O'Reilly's the B9422, which is this upper torque mount, and we're gonna throw that in right now. Uh, oh, a brand new battery, of course, went in today too. The right battery, because the other battery did not fit at all. There we go. One that's not ruined. There's just two 18s holding on this mount. Uh, there's one here and one there, and let's see. Yep. Let's see if we can get number two with one hand. Might be tricky. The answer is no, that is not a one-handed bolt. Again, with them boys at Nissan, do not know how to tighten a bolt. Uh, it took a jack handle on a half-inch ratchet to get that out of there. How ridiculous. All right, so now we just wiggle in our new one, line up the hole, toss it back together. Bye forever, Cube. That was the last thing. Oh, it runs so much better now. And the spare was completely flat. I aired that up to stop the TPMS light and brand new glass. That is our brand new windshield. Exhaust rattle solved too. I, I think this thing's ready to head out the door. Now that the cube is fully wrapped up, we are ready to move on to my S430 and the reason it is completely totaled. So this is my 2004 Mercedes S430, this is the facelifted W220. I've got the, the nice front end and the nicer uh, head unit and a couple other cool things that happened with the facelift. And while it is a great looking car, I only paid $2,000 for it. Now, a lot of that comes from the fact that it's a salvage title and clean retail on one of these is about $6,000. But the reason I paid $2,000 for it will become apparent as we go over this car and just start to, uh, find its flaws. So we're gonna do that right now. We'll start with the exterior and then we'll uh, kind of go to the interior and then we'll get it up on the lift and check out all the mechanicals. Ooh, is that Black Widow? No, it looks pretty hourglassy, but. Starting at the spider zone, these windows, these like wing windows here in the back, uh, they're starting to delaminate internally. And this window you can see is starting to fail just a little bit there on the edge. And the seals around these, they're bad as well. Handle paint, bad uh, but here's something that actually affects the functionality of the car the auto dimming driver's side heated rear view mirror of course is failing this is super common um, i found used glass that i can drop in here for about a hundred dollars shipped so not too bad of a fix you're thinking you should absolutely do that well we haven't begun to fight uh, also soft closed doors right we talked about that in a previous video and in the comments a lot in the back here whoop i closed it for real you can see the door suck in, all the magic happens, it's wonderful. Now the front door doesn't move one bit. Neither front door moves, which we'll get into in a bit. I think the code reader will answer our questions on that. This car does have a salvage title, but I can't find any body damage, which makes me think it's possible this was a flood car, something I never buy, but there's no like evidence of it being a flood car. There's no water line, uh, there's no real issues per se. The only thing that is possible is that this front bumper got very damaged because you can see the inside of that lip isn't painted very well. Uh, maybe the front bumper got replaced in a collision. Whoever repaired this, if it was repaired, did an amazing job because the color is flawless. The gaps are good. I mean, if this was repaired, somebody is an absolute monster at bodywork. At the same time, if it was the front bumper, that would have been enough to salvage the whole car out for really any insurance company out there. Um, Obviously, it's not worth too much money. So a bumper that costs a few thousand dollars should be enough to total this. It would hit 
75% of the value or even 100% almost instantly. Everything else up front looks pretty good. Once we get underneath the car, we'll see that the brakes are just absolutely obliterated. There's nothing left of those. And of course, we already know from the first video, the air suspension is not there. The pump's there, the distribution block's there, but somebody changed it to the worst suspension you could possibly put on one of these. I'm pretty sure it's max speeding rods. I'm about 98% sure it's max speeding rods. Uh, just because of the paint color, it's not the R-Nots. The R-Nots look a lot different. Continuing around the front end, we've got a crack in the windshield, a bullseye right there. Fixable, I can definitely repair that. We are missing the caps for the side of the road jacks there, the system where you like stick the pipe in there and use a jack with it to give you like an external lift point, missing those little covers. Uh, the trunk is completely messed up. Everybody was commenting about how I didn't know what this was for in the first video. I, I mean, I had a good idea of what it was for, but it does the absolute opposite of what it's supposed to do. If we can push the button, I don't know if we can. There we go. So watch this. We'll give it a couple seconds and the handle should retract. Maybe, maybe not. Come on, girl. Close it, maybe it'll pop out or maybe it'll do nothing today. It's totally at the whim of the Mercedes what it's gonna do here. So anyway, the problem with this handle is it's very common on W220s. These wires right here, uh, they have all this tension on them and of course they're on like a cord reel that pulls out. Well, they go bad because of all the tension in the cord reel. So after that happens, like the sign of this failing is the handle doing the opposite of what it's supposed to do. So when this trunk is open, the handle retracts. It should retract if we give it enough time or wiggle the wires enough. Also, obviously this button didn't work. We tried the escape button. That was a fail. But if we close the trunk, usually that makes the handle come out. I think it's just given up altogether. We've got the wrong battery. Luckily we do have the battery cover. Uh, we're missing the spare tire, which is, you know, a few hundred dollars. Uh, we're missing the DVD navigation disc. We're missing the cartridge, the cassette for the CDs and the CD changer. And of course it's pretty dirty back there. That gets us mostly around the back other than the issues with the paint. Uh, those are incredibly deep, scraped all the way down to the plastic on the bumper. Oh, the antennas, uh, it's having a lot of problems with the antennas themselves. Uh, the cover's missing for this one and I think parts of it are missing as well. So the GPS antenna failure, telephone antenna failures, it's, it's got some problems. The body itself looks reasonably straight though and everything that matters like the windows and air conditioning, that all works. Let's get inside. I mentioned this in the first video, the handle that releases the parking brake. Oh, it doesn't work at all. That's an issue. I pushed down on the parking brake one click. Oops, all the power stuff works when we hop in here. My seat will move forward, the steering wheel comes down, everything does basically what you would expect. Seat controls work, the windows work, all this stuff kind of does what it's supposed to do. Power folding mirrors, they be folding. Oh man, what a nice fold too. They get closer than most mirrors. Uh, that looks great. Auto lights, that all works. Uh, of course, we had tons of errors on the dash. We'll get into those in a minute. The uh, screen on the navigation, the command navigation unit is messed up. And people say you're supposed to be able to just push really hard on this and it'll make those dots in the display go away. I don't think that's actually true. In reality, you need to buy a new screen that's about $249 or switch to one of the new Android ones that everybody actually uses. The, uh, you can see it's not getting any better. I'm pushing really hard. Uh, I did plan on replacing the screen, but this car has a lot of problems. Speaking of problems right here, you can see the air suspension lift up. Obviously that doesn't work. Uh, you can see the air suspension cycle through mode button. That's disabled as well. Lights are on and error. Um, lots of errors on the dash, uh, SRS and everything else. Let's see. Uh, this side of the steering wheel, these buttons don't work. I think I found that out before. The audio transport stuff though, that does work. You can, yep. Okay. Turn that off. Also command. What a cool head unit. What a cool head unit. We're missing the passenger side temperature adjustment in the auto climate section. That's probably not a big deal, probably not too expensive. The shift knob, that should just be replaced. Yeah, obviously it's just worn to the point that it can't really be saved. Steering wheels for W220s, that's trash. 
incredibly expensive. I think 250 to $400 is what I was seeing for used ones, trying to find one that was in okay shape. Uh, and then of course it needs the airbag. The airbag comes with the controls. If these controls are actually bad, then I need those too. That is a ton of money. Uh, so we're looking at five to $600 right there. So just in the interior to get that kind of straightened out, uh, I should probably replace this as well. This uh, sun visor doesn't stay all the way up. Uh, I would guess we're looking at a little over a thousand dollars to straighten out the interior. Not outrageous, that would include fixing the leather in the seat as well, and uh, fixing the command navigation, and putting a wheel in it, and putting a shift knob on it. That would make the interior, you know, kind of new again. That does not include the doors or any other modules that are not working. Under this big beautiful hood on the W220, we've got nothing but problems. The air shocks are of course missing, all the lines are in place and these check valves, but the air struts don't exist at all, so I would have to buy an entire new, well, probably a used set. Yeah, that's gonna cost about $1,000 to get the suspension replaced with used stuff that might not work. That's not an outrageous price to put Aromatic back and have this car lift itself and do everything correctly, but it is still a considerable amount of money. Here in the front end, uh, there's a idler or something, at minimum a bearing that is failing in the accessory belt system. It's the idler or the tensioner. Uh, it could be even worse. It could be an alternator or something else, but I think it's just an idler. That's quite a bit of money to replace that and the valve cover gaskets are shot, and I'm sure there are more gaskets shot in this engine as well. When it's running, oh, the hood struts are bad, obviously why I'm holding this up. There's a pretty nasty tick, and some people mentioned it's either low on oil or a chain tensioner or chain guides. So the most bulletproof engine ever made, this one's got problems. We got ourselves a nice level hood prop there. Okay, uh, everything else, we need to check the oil. Let's see what that looks like. Eh, I don't think it's low on oil, but I'll grab a paper towel and we'll check for sure. I checked the oil, it looks perfect, which lends even more credence to the fact that it's probably timing chain issues, either the guides or the tensioners. Uh, I'm sure it has hydraulic tensioners, so that is a, a whole thing by itself. That's a multi-day project to pull everything off of this engine and kind of chains, guides, accessory belt system, uh, all the seals. I mean. It's a lot of work. If you take a quick look through the front end, everything looks absolutely factory, which makes me really wonder how this thing was salvaged. Uh, the core support is perfect. The whole front end looks correct. I don't see anything like broken or replaced. And the frame rails like perfectly straight. I just don't see how this thing was ever wrecked. Both fenders match exactly and how they're mounted matches exactly with no witness marks like anything ever moved. How did this car get salvaged? Such a mystery. Let's get underneath the Benzo <laughs> and check this thing out. Anyway, we've got some Pirellis that are dry rotted and gone. Uh, there's the wear bars, there's the siping. Uh, those tires are gone. The brakes all the way around are completely toast. Big lips on them. They'll need rotors, they'll need pads. They need sensors, the brake lights on, of course, and we can't reset the e-brake. I mean, what a mess. The brake system, it's a little rough. Uh, right here by the diff, we've got some wires tied up, which I think are the solenoid control wires for the air suspension, since uh, that's all gone, of course. These, don't they look like max speeding rods to you guys? Silver painted, black springs, zero adjustment. Uh, it's just gotta be what it is. The drive shaft isolator here, I can't spin it, but you can see there's dry rot. That needs replaced, uh, moving on up. The exhaust looks good here, but you can see somebody tried to work on it here. There's brand new bolts in there. I wonder if that's a leak, but uh, this is a definite leak. Look at this. Uh, somebody thought they were gonna hollow the cats out apparently, like maybe they were plugged up, but you know they probably weren't. It's so rare. Uh, this is the worst welding job, obviously leaking all over the place, leaking there, leaking there leaking there. Oh, that is terrible. And of course, it's so hard to buy cats. Um, that drive shaft isolator up there looks okay. The Ford one, everything else is kind of intact. The transmission itself looks relatively dry, but here it's either the valve cover oil leaking down or maybe a rear main, who knows? That's definitely a problem. Uh, the cats, again, this is why the car is totaled. This right here. That's enough to finish the car off. Uh, obviously it's the worst welding ever. It's just, 
exhaust leaks for days all over this car. They did the worst work ever. If you're gonna do this, just cut the cats out and straight pipe it. I mean, it's not gonna help anything, but it would have been better than this nightmare. Uh, it probably would have leaked less. Uh, we have, I know there's already 302 sensors in error. And of course it's because of all this, which means it probably needs all 402 sensors, which is a huge bill. That's probably three to $400 right there. Again, more of the brand new coilover replacement for the aromatic. Uh, it does not look like it's in good shape. And of course the front brakes are trash as well. Here you can see the air compressor for aromatic. All of that stuff is intact. Uh, the dryer or filter is kind of, okay. it exists and it's up there with bailing wire, which is pretty funny. And there's the distribution block on top of the air compressor. You can see all the airlines. That is all there. Everything's still hooked up. So that's good news. Um, obviously all the shields underneath are missing, but there's no body damage, no frame damage or anything like that. Everything looks really good. Well, that's our inspection. It's not terrible, but let's hook the Autel up to it, scan this thing and see just how bad the car thinks it is. Oh, we're doing good so far. One module with no faults. <laughs> Come on, find some faults. Oh, Distronic? I don't think that's even in this car. There we go, I deleted it. Suspension, faults. 12 faults, oh. And it took 15 minutes to pull these codes, but let's take a look at them and see what we've got going on here. So, all the oxygen sensors are extremely angry, as you would expect with the cats being gone, even the upstreams, um, it's just unhappy. Transmission control, no CAN message received. That one's probably not a big deal. But these two, the right rear speed sensor, open circuit, that's fun. And one or more speed sensors are implausible. Airbag, what is it here? Front passenger seat occupied recognition is faulty. So anyway, the whole front passenger seat is angry, which is weird because all the power stuff on it does work. And uh, supply voltage too low, tire pressure monitor, very upset. Control module is under voltage, can communication is faulty. Signal transmission from the wheels. Oh man. And it can't talk to all wheel electronics. Uh, what else we have here? Right rear wheel RPM signal. Well, that's probably the speed sensor. And of course, everything is upset about the air suspension. Lots of faults right there. <laughs> anyway, it knows they're all missing. The ignition switch is angry. All the door control modules are angry. What's funny is the mirror up downs, they work perfectly. All the mirror stuff works. Seat adjustment, switch is stuck. I guess that's possible. A whole lot of angry door computers. Uh, lots of, these are all true. It does seem like all the lights that it says are burnt out are burnt out. Uh, front right signal acquisition, more burnout lights. Uh, more burnout lights. <laughs> um, yes, that is definitely true. The backrest in the driver's seat does not work correctly. It's fully inflated. Air demand is too high. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild car. Left front reversible emergency tensioning retractor has a problem. If this DTC is current, it cannot be deleted. And these are all airbag, it looks like. Whole bunch of codes there. All these emergency retractors, interior temperature sensor fan motor does not run, ouch. How do you knock that thing down? The auto climate works wonderfully in here. Um, the rain sensor doesn't work. I could see that. Uh, it's a stock windshield though, still has the Mercedes badge in it and it looks to be in pretty good shape. Has the Mercedes star over there. There's just one chip in it. So kind of weird that the rain sensor would be having issues. This mirror is, uh, yeah, that mirror hates itself. Master reports open ring, so the fiber might be broken somewhere. Um, wow, that's just a lot of stuff. The life signal of the airbag control module cannot be, uh. <laughs> Cables to GPS antenna has an open circuit, that's pretty funny. This thing might be uh, very broken, but it sure does not care. It drives wonderfully. Let's clear all these codes. There we go, we've cleared the like 40 codes this thing had set. All the safety stuff though, automatically reset. Those are all hard codes. All right, let's make some notes. Uh, interior, let's get the interior sorted. 
my thoughts on that were uh, about a thousand, I'd say 1250 to make sure everything is reasonable in there. So $1,250. Wheels and tires, I found a set of new like AMG 19s off uh, an ML or something. Same bolt pattern, I don't know if the offset's right. A thousand dollars for those with really nice tires. So we'll put wheels on here and uh, $1,000. The problem with going to those brand new wheels, they're way bigger and they look so much better. Sometimes they make the car look horrible. Um, the wheel is just so muscular and awesome looking that you see it on the car and you just kind of hate it and you kind of wish the car had its 17s that this thing sits on. Pretty small by today's standards, but they looked right on this S-Class. Air suspension. So we'll put Aromatic on here and that by itself, a minimum 1,000 to straighten out. The engine, I have my FCP Euro car is at like $1,500 for the brakes in the engine. And that doesn't include the drive shaft isolators uh, or the exhaust, obviously. So we'll put engine on here. And engine is gonna be 1,500 minimum. That's a minimum right there. That didn't include fluids or any of that fun stuff, filters, all the uh, deferred maintenance that this thing will need. That includes timing chains, gasketry, things that it needs to live a good life again. All right. so. We are already at, a, you know, $5,000, $4,750 right now. And the big problem here is the exhaust. So there's two different sets of catalyst uh, setups for this engine. There's a 50 state one, which is the California compliant one. It costs more and is quite a bit harder to get. And then there's the one that I think, I think fits this car. And I can buy that for about $785 if I remember right. So we'll put exhaust on here and that, that doesn't solve any problems like exhaust gaskets if it's leaking at the manifold because of previous work done to it. Uh, we'll call exhaust fix $800. We'll just round down to 800. That puts my total to fix the S430 at $5,550. That's clean retail. That's medium clean retail on one of these things. And it's not, to me, it's not a clean car. In today's market, this is actually kind of like fair to good. Um, it's definitely no excellent car, but if you cleaned up the bumper, you could probably hit good pretty easily, $5,500. But then you have to consider it's salvage titled. The salvage title probably makes the resale on the car closer to $3,500, maybe 4,000 if you're lucky. Um, that's called taking an L if you add the purchase price in. It would put me at $7,550 in the car if you consider my $2,000 purchase price. Uh, that would be a huge L. So it drives great. Car's a tank. It's honestly very nice to drive. No, you wouldn't have to fix all this stuff. Yes, you could just change the oil and drive it into the ground. And there's no reason not to. It's got a ton of miles on it. It's a salvage titled car uh, and it's a great driver, honestly. If you put tires on it and brakes on it and change the oil and you, you probably need to fix the exhaust. The engine's not running very well. You could drive this thing forever. Who knows when the timing chains would finally let go or, or the tensioner or something like that. But you could drive this without fixing it. I think the best move here is just to resell this. I mean, obviously it's been detailed since I bought it. It would bring 2,500 tomorrow, 3,000 tomorrow, no questions at all. And then I would not be taking it out. Obviously it was in really rough shape when it came in and the detail helped immensely. It's already looking a lot better. So what do you guys think? Maybe I'll put a poll up. Do we dump unlimited money into fixing this and then lose it all? And then, you know, maybe never be able to sell the car or do we move on to another S-Class? Personally, I think it's move on to another S-Class. It's probably still the greatest car ever made because this one has been just beat and beat by all of its owners. And somehow the car is like, I'm still here for you. I'm still gonna get you home. I think this would get anybody home. So that is it for today, guys. That is the reason my uh, S430 is mechanically totaled and totaled in reality. I mean, it's fully totaled. 70% of a car's value totals it immediately. But uh, we're at well over 100% of the value here. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjr.com where you get cool shirts, not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. This poor S-Class, doesn't it just look beautiful? It's still an absolutely stunning car. And from a couple feet away, no one would ever know there was anything wrong with it.